Hello and welcome everybody. Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV here, well, at Bish's RV today in Coldwater, Michigan, my hometown store, getting you some updated footage on the 20 BHS Geo Pro. Very popular family camp and model here. By default, yeah, just a, a common bunkhouse, but it has a cargo bunk function, which can allow for things like, if you have folding e-bikes, like I've got electric uh, folding e-bike, I could fold that up and I could fit two of those in that cargo bunk room. So, depending on what you're doing, this might be a really slick couples camper that allows you to be able to like bring your, uh, your, your toys that are not like a motorcycle and an ATV along with you without needing to get a toy hauler that blows up a lot of your like living space. Bunks can be a good storage option as well, especially when you're looking at Rockwoods. Anything that they build that's load-bearing, like a bunk, like a bed, like their dinette, it is all a welded aluminum cage structure. This is a double Asdell series, meaning Asdell on the inside and outside layers of the wall. GeoPro's been doing that since way before it was cool. They've also adopted things like factory solar and a factory inverter to power those outlets in case you are untethered and out of the parks. Once again, way ahead of the curve. Most brands still aren't doing anything like that in anything close to this size. We're looking at one today with an optional additional solar panel up on the roof to give you 400 watts so no that's a factory available thing and this is a very straightforward floor plan like everybody and their brother builds it but they don't build it at like the trim level of uh, a rock or flag staff i call it rock staff camping here rock staff doing rock staff things uh, uh you've got factory tire pressure monitoring tank heaters an outside griddle situation an actual roof ladder to get you up to a fully walkable roof there's still some things made in this class that don't have a walkable roof. They don't have front stabilizer jacks, let alone all the other stuff that we're looking at here. But it's got some things that I could see you not liking, like the bed's not a true queen. Uh, like there's a little bit of carpet in the slide floor, a couple little odds and ends like that. I wanna show you the ins and the outs of this one, the ups and the downs, so that you know if it's the right one for you. And if you appreciate that approach and things and how we give you the good info before you go spending your lots and lots of money, Hit that subscribe button, like our video. If you're a regular uh, return a member of the RV Nerd Herd, my brain went on pause for a minute there. Enough of this, let's get going. So when you first walk in, you look to the left. This is pretty much what you're gonna see right here if you come visit one of these uh, in person. Again, very straightforward layout, but executed, I feel, very, very nicely. I do like the windows all the way around the slide out. In a single axle model, that's not typically something you find. I also really like what they did here. Like, I'm not typically a big fan of dinette posts in the, uh, you know, in the table, but they moved it all the way off to the side and the rest of the table brackets against the wall. So that is exceptionally sturdy lightweight can still fold fold down into a sleeper still fold down into a sleeper uh, okay um this actually kind of surprises me uh that there's still a little bit of carpet in that dinette slide floor um especially since it's a a little bit of a step up slide nothing major i'm just uh i don't know i i kind of almost would expect them to to move away from that over time now their construction this is is very different from a lot of what you find in the industry like it's six and a half foot tall to here, but you may notice it's got a really uh, aggressive vault to the ceiling. I don't use a wide angle fisheye camera lens, by the way. Uh, the, the sidewalls are only six foot one. The whole thing vaults right up. If you're curious about how that kind of happens and how it works, I've got a link uh, in the description for you to check out the full factory construction tour, one of these things, uh, in case you're curious. Now, oven used to be an option. Oven has since become standard. And notice, even in this little camper, they're still using the bigger ovens. They've got that situated right next to the Barley Poppinator right there. Yes, sir. We have a 5.3, I think, 5.3, 5.7, something like that, cubic foot 12-volt uh, DC compressor fridge. And there is an option for a convection microwave if uh, that's kind of the thing you prefer. A lot of people used to add those uh, when the traditional gas ovens were not standard. Now that they are, I I'm really wondering how often we're going to kind of see those things. Now, as we start, this is, uh, we're looking over at the campsite of the RV right now. So if you're sitting there washing some dishes, washing your hands, and you hear the kids screaming bloody murder, you can kind of peek out the window and figure out what's going on. You might need to parent that situation. You've also got a full window in the entry door. They don't have a window across the bed, though, because that's where your 12-volt entertainment system is. You don't have a dedicated standalone stereo. You have a, uh, a, a TV soundbar combo, uh, effectively, is what that is right there. It's a little bit different. You can Bluetooth to it, of course, being has a soundbar type function. And again, it's 12 volt. So if you are just on battery power, you can operate that. And did you notice? Factory supplied shade in the entry door is kind of a nice feature. Now, one of the things 
And we've already kind of touched on a couple of my carpet in the slide. I'm trying to be really fair about this. One of the things that I think some people may not love about this RV, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera right there, is the fact that that is a Camp Queen bed. Geo Pro's really inconsistent on that. Some of their models have a true queen, some don't. Um, this is a Camp Queen. It's 60 inches wide. It's 74 inches long because it's a seven foot wide body. And they had to make room for this little headboard up here, which one of the interesting things, you see that little black circle over there on the left? That's what I call a pop-up power tower. So it's got some household, some USB plugs, all real handy, especially with that shelf right there for the headboard. And when it's in the down position, it's actually a, uh, a wireless phone charge pad, which I think is uh, kind of cool. Uh, if you wanted to get rid of that power tower, and if you wanted to, to pull the headboard area out of the RV, you may be able to put a True Queen bed in this. The thing is, what I don't know, because I've never done it, is if you do that, if you get rid of the power tower, if you pull this box out of here, there might be something else down there preventing it. I don't know. If there's any owners who have tried or checked, let me know. Now, this kind of confuses people sometimes. Why is there a little bit of carpet under the mattress? And what's funny is that's actually a really good way to prevent mold from forming uh, under the mattress because that little bit of carpet can still breathe uh, a little bit. It helps a little bit of air interchange kind of in and out of the, uh, the, the mattress area. Now, working our way back around basically to uh, where we started over here, taking a look at the uh, the dinette situation. Once again, very nice that it is not a knee knocker. One of the things that's less obvious on this is uh, what they're doing with their windows. Now, you can see that we've got, you know, the breeze through windows all the way around. That big window is a crank out frameless window. But notice how you're not seeing any sort of like strings hanging down be uh, on either side of the window. That's because... Uh, what we have right here is a um, uh, blackout roller shade, basically. And they've changed their front window shade. That is also now a blackout roller shade. And it has a couple magnet anchors that drop down to hold it so it's not constantly dangling over the bed, which is, I think, kind of a, uh, a nice thing. Overall, with the little bit of space they had, I think they did a really good job with the, uh, the storage potential in this one. You know, it's all pocket screwed cabinetry. It's actually full hardwood doors. Now, what I didn't say is full hardwood cabinets. You've got to watch people in the burbage and nomenclature of the RV industry about stuff like that. The door itself is hardwood. The cabinet styles and rails. The box of the cabinet, that is what's called lumber core. So it is a wood core with an MDF fascia, a sticker wrap, and it is pocket screwed together. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, the uh, There's a little switch on the side of the refrigerator cabinet, by the way that uh, is basically just a hard kill switch for the fridge, which I think is pretty slick and pretty cool. And I'd be kind of curious, what would you put um, under the oven? You've got that drop down, I call it knuckle buster door. And it's just an open cavity down there. What would you stuff in that? Well, I'm, I'm just kind of wondering. And did you notice that over here, you've either got good pantry space, which almost no single axle camper anymore has good pantry space, but removable shelving. So you have the potential for some hanging closet space in there, which I think is uh, kind of handy. Now, if you're looking really closely over here at the bunks, you've already noticed what I'm about to show you. Keep an eye on that top bed right there, Alakazam. You see how it? Uh, you have two separate curtains, one for the upper, one for the lower bunk. And you don't have to heave, ho, throw the kids into the upper bunk like some jaunty pirate tune, because it includes its own ladder. I will tell you, though, if you're an adult-sized and adult-weighted person, that ladder is not nice on your feet. I've climbed up a couple of those, uh, like in toy hours. I ain't a fan, but little kids, probably going to be uh, okay. Now, uh, there are bunks here. The structure of this like upper bunk is all uh, you know aluminum structured. Uh, again, the uh, the ladder included, and both the uh, well the the upper window rather in the upper bunk um, opens for airflow. Bottom window, uh, or God bless America, bottom bunk does not have a window that opens. Both the upper and lower bunks have these, however, household and USB outlets, including both the USB uh, A and C type. Uh, which makes it far more compatible with a lot of newer devices, which is kind of cool. Now, as peeking around there, I didn't see a sticker for the weight ratings on those bunks. To my knowledge, typically Rockwood bunks are rated for about 300 pounds, but again, I, I don't have the sticker to verify that. I wish that almost feels like something that needs to be standardized. They need to tell you exactly what the bunk ratings are here. Now, the toilet space 
is surprisingly nice, way better than I would have expected in here. And as we uh, work our way up top, you see that you've got this like extra bonus cabinet right there. What's kind of cool about that is uh, a lot of little campers like this don't have any sort of linen space in the bathroom. It's really nice that's built right in. What is also really nice is you don't have to spend the money just to get the better vent fan. They just do it right here from the factory level, and I love that right there. That's, is there, let me ask this. Is there anyone who does not want a bigger vent fan in their RV's bathroom? Please raise your hand. By the way, any of you listening out there, if you believe in psychokinesis, well then raise my hand and let's talk about it. Anyway, moving on. Headroom in the shower. I ain't gonna put it lightly. Sucks. If you're my height, shower headroom sucks and you're definitely Scrooge McDuckin up in this thing. But tiny camper, uh, lighter weight. Uh, I guess that's just the, the accommodation we have to make here. I do like that you don't have to bend over to get your you know soaps and body washes because that's all built right in there. And this seems to be a neither love it or hate it thing. They have this built-in little mini corner sink over there. Some people really do not care for that thing. I don't mind it. It it I don't feel it's in the way when I'm showering, and it gives me a perfect place. If you just load some ice into that, the ice melts away, and you got a nice little chest to keep some shower beers going on. And in case you're curious, that doesn't just dribble down the wall and go down the shower drain. That actually does have its own plumbing. And while we're looking down here, we've also got the AquaView shower miser. Uh, this is a water uh, reclamation system. You really don't use that typically if you're in an RV park. Where you're going to use that is if you're uh, dry camping so that you can allow your water to heat up before you start pumping water down the drain into your gray tank and, and wasting stuff out of your fresh tank. Now you may have noticed that's a tub, not a shower. They did that intentionally because that's what allows them to use a shower curtain, which is what gives you far more elbow room around that toilet. So there actually is a little bit of method uh, to that madness right there. But once again, not every kind of jelly is everybody's jam, man. Now for travel and road mode, uh, you know, since the dinette sticks out of the slide quite a bit, some people kind of wonder about that. What's nice here, even with the slide out closed, you can very easily navigate through this thing like you are doing a little bit of uh walk on the catwalk hey you know do a little turn on the catwalk but it's not too awful tight you don't got to do a lot of sideways travel trailer two-stepping you can get right back to the bathroom you can get to the bunks although i kind of figured for road mode you may have cargo loaded in that cargo bunk area so i thought it might be better to kind of simulate that with the bunk actually flipped up and in case you're wondering why this mattress is sitting here, all kinds of kitty wampus, it's so I could do this. Bah, 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 bah. But <laughs> it's so stupid. But actually, more to the point, it's to show you that one of the best places to stow that ladder when you're going down the road is just under the mattress. Because when this thing's roller quaking, jiggle banging, it just don't matter. It ain't gonna go anywhere. And uh, you know. If you appreciate both the road mode access as well as the uh, like Muppet Mouth Theater information there, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let us know that we're doing a good job or call me an idiot. I don't know, whatever's fair. Now getting one of these little guys down the road is pretty darn easy because it is, uh, you know, uh, what about 4,500 pounds total maximum weight and only a little bit over 21 foot tip to tail length. And what that means, if you've got a decent tow package SUV, if you've got a tow package like midsize pickup, this thing's gonna probably work pretty darn nicely for you. Um, obviously you always wanna double check each ve uh, vehicle's capacities against the RV in question. Always, always to make sure, you know, you're, you're putting safety first. Now you might hear a little bit, bit of background noise where we're right next to the road today. So, uh, you know, you might hear a guy with CJ5 and four wheel drive and Smokey on his tail, but um, you, might, you know, you might hear somebody Jake breaking, you might hear a collision. Uh, I'd like to think selfishly it's because people are rubbernecking our inventory here, but truth be told, it's because uh, the uh, the city planner in my local city really didn't do a good job laying out where they put the stoplight out front here, right next to a two lanes becomes one lane road. But I realize that I'm spending a lot of time talking about the Coldwater city infrastructure, which is not why you tuned in. Well, I, there's that one guy. There's that one guy who's like, yes, I've been waiting to hear about the Coldwater city infrastructure. Finally, my day has come, you know. And now that person needs a new hobby. Sorry about that. Let's talk construction. You've got double Asdell sidewalls, meaning Asdell layering inside and out of the sidewall. You even have laminated front and rear walls and roof. 
The floor on this is about the only thing that's not laminated, but it's still aluminum structured. It's a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. Uh, they bulked up from uh, a couple years ago, actually, uh, from their original, basically, pop-up style floor decking. They just weren't happy with how it was holding up long-term. They wanted to beef it up a little bit. Now, uh, over here, you see uh, the start of our frameless tinted windows. Um, you may notice that the slide side windows, though, uh, on either side of the dinette, those open for airflow. We probably were able to peek that inside, and I'm going <coughs> to... Ooh, pardon me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Mm, kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, anyway, um, kind, of, kind of like Smokey chasing that guy with the CJ5 and four-wheel drive. <laughs> anyway, frameless tinted windows. They tilt open. You get some rainy day airflow. You don't get a ton of airflow out of them. Although, again, the slide side windows, those you can get some decent cross breeze cutting through. Now, I wanted to go uh, wrap around this RV in like reverse order today to kind of showcase this little cargo bunk feature right here. And a couple things. First of all, if you're in bunk mode, some people get a little spooked by the fact that, oh my god, somebody could just open this door and grab my kid. Okay, um, just so you know, this has a deadbolt right here, just like the main entry door. And for somebody to make enough noise to pop that deadbolt, you're going to be able to hear them and, you know, grab your kid, get out of Dodge, whatever the case may be. And if that still spooks you, you still don't feel comfortable with that, don't get this camper. That's okay. We have other RVs that don't have a cargo bunk with a similar arrangement. Call our team. But back here... This is kind of what I was talking about. I've done some test loading on this with my electric e-bike. And uh, I, I found, you know, depending on how you fold it up, if you're careful and how you kind of wedge it in here, you could get uh, two, two bikes in here. Ooh, hold on. This is a question I keep asking, and manufacturers keep apparently not doing it. Behind that wall panel is the back of one of those dinette benches. What if that was all the way in there what if that was like a, a pocket that went all the way in there would that be of interest to you i don't know now one of the other nice things here too is uh this is a frosty glass door but you see that they do still have let me get that off there that privacy shade so uh you know if the sun is beating on that side of the rv in the morning it may not uh be as easy to wake the kid up you know before you're ready to wake up what it man i i I wish I, I had the energy I had when I was a kid. Holy for Jolies here. Uh, notice that we have a factory installed full, like full time mounted roof ladder. Giving you a peek up there. Uh, man, it is nice having some inventory back in stock here. Things got sparse for a while. If you've been watching this channel for a long time, you know what I'm talking about. But you're seeing the second factory optional solar panel up there. Instead of 200 watts, we're looking at 400, which I ain't mad at it. I kind of like it now that I've seen it more often. Uh, you also saw the Max Air vent cover over that uh, bathroom vent. Uh, that allows for some really nice, basically anytime airflow, uh, especially if the RV's in storage. It really helps kind of keep it breathing out a little bit. Now, on the back here, this is a more recent update, a 2023 seasonal update. They've added uh, an accessory receiver hitch onto the back of this. Now, it is rated for 300 pounds of vertical load limit, uh, so kind of keep that little uh, idea there in mind. In case you're wondering, the spare tire that you're not seeing is belly mounted. Basically, it's down under, uh, like, you see where that brown box the griddle's located the spare tire is essentially mounted down under there now not a big camper but they did a good job of maximizing the awning space on it which i appreciate and it doesn't have an outside camp kitchen but nothing says you can't bring a cooler outside and it does uh include a factory griddle which is a nice handy situation of course you got your propane cooker hooker quick connect right down below that and factory tire pressure monitoring I think that is an awesome, awesome feature that they put on these, especially on a single axle. You know, a lot of folks prefer tandem axles for the uh, the peace of mind, like what if I have a tire failure? Well, that's a real thing. I can, I can understand that. I'm not even criticizing. But if you have a uh, factory TPMS and you're doing a better job of keeping an eye on your, your tire's health and status, it's going to really, really reduce a lot of that risk and give you some more peace of mind. Now, if you're wondering, where your sewer hose goes because there's no bumper they thought of that um they also have standard holding tank heaters going on all the holding tanks underneath one of these and this is a nice find a full big pass-through storage compartment right up front here uh full-size baggage doors on both sides and you see that little portable solar prep plug so right now we're looking at 400 watts of solar on the roof 200 watts standard you can always get yourself like a portable panel say slap you know anywhere from 100 watts to a, uh, another 200 watts down here on the ground be able to park in the shade chase the sun really extend your uh, camp time and you can 
use both the roof and ground solar solutions basically simultaneously to really maximize your total solar input. Now take a moment if you haven't already, drop me a couple notes, let me know what you think. I will also leave you a link in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability on these. One link to rule them all, Lord of the Rings style. It'll show you both the Rockwood and Flagstaff versions of this that we have in stock. And if you're wondering, they're literally the exact same thing with two names. I've actually got a video on that if you're curious. I've also got a video on the construction of these if you want to know the ins and the outs of them. And if I forget to leave you a link to that, well, leave me a comment, let me know and I'll get that fixed up. Until next time, thanks for tuning in once again. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.